Hey guys, what is up? This is Colin and this is Colin Talks Crypto. And today we're going to cover the hard fork for Bitcoin Cash, November 15th, 2018. That's happening in 10 days from now and all the drama surrounding it and who is in the right, who is in the wrong and quite frankly, what is happening? Thank you for joining me guys. All right, guys, so as you may have heard, there is an upcoming hard fork scheduled for November 15th, and it's a regular thing that the ecosystem has come to expect. Now, an interesting turn of events is that we have two implementations. We have Bitcoin SV and Bitcoin ABC, both in direct competition with each other on this upcoming hard fork. And the reason this is a problem is because it's threatening a network split. So after a lot of research, I've looked at both sides of this and I have come to be in favor of Bitcoin ABC. And I'm gonna explain why. So the main reason I'm in favor of Bitcoin ABC is for technical reasons. I watched a video, which I'm gonna put a link in the description below, where Amari Sachet talks about Bitcoin ABC's approach to scaling. And it's very, very intelligent in my opinion. Basically what he's proposing is we fix the most difficult technical problems first. Yes, um, so I agree, we, we need to get beyond 32 meg at some point. Um, but I'd like to put things in perspective. 32 megs is PayPal level volumes of transaction. So it's already um, like you are a worldwide payment system. You are not the payment system and the money of the world, but you are like pretty damn big. Um, so we are there. Um, problem is we know that if we go beyond that, actually the software doesn't work at all. Like there is a bunch of problem in the software that, you know, make it so that it doesn't quite work. And so if you just increase the block size and you don't change those other stuff, you, the only thing that you achieve is that you increase your attack surface. Because, um, so there is all kind of, of those vector that becomes four times as bad if they are linear, 16 times as bad if they are quadratic and so on, right? And so it doesn't seem like a very rational decision to increase that limit to increase your attack surface when you effectively cannot handle that transaction volume because of other limitation in the software. So we prioritize the work in a bit of a different way. Mm. So Bitcoin Unlimited has prioritized the work to work on the most immediate bottleneck first. So mm. the first bottleneck we hit, they, they work on it and then they go to the next one. Uh, and Bitcoin ABC, we have prioritized things in a, in a way that is a bit different, where we prioritize um, the bottleneck that is the harder to fix first. Yeah. Because the way we see it is that the ecosystem is quite small right now. And so those more expensive change are actually like so any kind of change become more expensive as the ecosystem grows, mm. right? So if we do the most expensive change that need to happen to scale properly now, the cost is less, um, you know, is less big because by the point we, we grow enough so that we hit that bottleneck, mm. we may also be big, like very likely we will be big enough so that the cost is probably really high mm. to fix those. And this is more or less what happened with the block size, right? Like for, uh, you, you're, you're very early on, I don't know when you joined the space, but, um, in like 2012, 2013 or so, people started talking about the block size and everybody was like, you know, we don't really care. The block has more, you know, they are less than 100 kilobytes. Where they're gonna get bigger, we're gonna fix it. No problem, everybody agrees, right? This was what everybody was saying at the time. Yeah. Um, but then when we got close, um, we saw that, you know, we had a bunch of new actors in the space. Many of them, they don't want it to because they had the business plan that were aligned with the fact that there is a limit. Um, and, and so we find ourselves, and, and generally there is more people to convince as well, right? So we find ourselves in a position where it become, you know, very, very difficult to raise the block size and we ended up having to fork to, to make that happen. So um, we very much don't want to find ourselves in, you know, the same situation again for other elements that limit scaling. And this is why we've been focusing on those elements that are the most expensive to fix. I had a very open mind to both implementations. I watched videos from both sides and learned what each side was proposing to do. And honestly, Bitcoin SV sounds very good and Bitcoin ABC sounds very good. They both sound like they're doing the right thing. They're both trying to scale Bitcoin cash so that it can be used as global money, cash that's peer to peer, right? 
and Jimmy Nugent from Enchain, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, um, proposes this peer-to-peer -peer cash that doesn't change and that businesses can come to rely on. And it sounds perfect and it sounds awesome. And, and Craig Wright has a little more of a hardcore approach. I read somewhere that you know Jimmy Nugent massages you while Craig Wright beats it into your face. And they have kind of this duo personality going on where Jimmy is very kind and nice and, and socially acceptable. And then Craig Wright is this raging tyrant guy who just throws anger left and right. And uh, it's quite an interesting uh, company and chain. I'm actually surprised those two get along and work well together based on the huge um, apparent personality clash. But again, I digress because this is not about personality, right? An idea should stand on its own merit despite the personality involved. You know, if, if Craig Wright is a very angry person who uh, blocked me on Twitter, which he did, um, that should be irrelevant. And I'm actually able to look past that and just look at the ideas. And I look at Bitcoin SV and it looks like a pretty smart project, right? So then I had to look at the other side, Bitcoin ABC, and just balance it out, you know? So what's the deal here? Why are there people hating each side? And I watched some videos from Omri Sachet, the creator of Bitcoin ABC, the first implementation, the lead implementation of the Bitcoin Cash Network. And watching and listening to him is very intriguing to me. But the technical reasons that he states struck me a little better than the end chain side of things. And, and here's why. Because there are a lot of upgrades that need to occur to Bitcoin Cash to be able to scale to the worldwide needs that we need to be able to see for hundreds of thousands of transactions per second or millions of transactions per second. You can't just increase a number of a block size and expect the blocks to be able to grow to that capacity. And essentially, that's what Bitcoin SV looks like it's doing to me. Their software simply increases the default max block size number without any underlying enhancements to the protocol, which enable it to technically reach that capacity. You know, you can't reach 128 megabyte blocks today because there's so many other bottlenecks and technical restrictions that get hit as limits before that even takes place. And Omri points this out and he says, we need to fix those things before we then continue to increase the block size because increasing the block size doesn't really do anything. It's just a number. And it's actually been tested recently on the Bitcoin Cash Network and 22 megabytes was the maximum size block that was able to be propagated through the network with the current software. And so if we just use Bitcoin SV's approach from Enchain and increase the max block size, it's not going to do a whole hell of a lot. And it's not a very intelligent approach either. I would argue though that saying, okay, we raise the block size to 128 meg when we cannot really handle it and say, okay, we, we can handle that. And then maybe one of those businesses is going to actually try and everything breaks down. It's, it's probably even worse than, um, you know, saying we, we do 32 meg. So I would be very much of the opinion that, you know, we, we need to raise it as much as possible to avoid this kind of issue, but I would rather not advertise something that we cannot do. So in a nutshell, what I see is Bitcoin ABC is all about improving the protocol's efficiency and ability to handle transactions so that we can realistically achieve higher transactional throughput. And Bitcoin SV is slapping a max block size on there, a default max block size that's higher without any of the underlying technical fixes that we need to reach that in an actual maximum. You know, they're speaking theoreticals, but we need actual uh, block sizes reaching that capacity. And we're not going to do that if the Bitcoin software doesn't improve its efficiencies with technical fixes. Now, that all aside, I am going to delve a little bit into the characters of these personalities. Now, if you take a look at the image on the left of your screen right now, this is from WeChat, which is a program used in Asia to chat. And this is Craig Wright talking right here. And I'm just going to read this out loud. And then you guys think for a second and tell me, do you think that this should be the type of person that we have in charge of Bitcoin Cash? Because if Bitcoin SV wins out in this hash rate war that's coming up, this is going to be the guy who's making all the decisions for Bitcoin Cash. He says, no split. I rather all dies than Bitcoin is fucked. We can hold and dump. I have 1.1 million Bitcoin Cash and 1.05 million Bitcoin. 
I win or it all goes down. No end. This is war. It is to death this time. No compromise ever again. I mean, these are intense, dictatorial, tyrant type comments. This is like, I feel like I'm listening to Hitler talk about the world here. And, and if they don't do as I say, then I'm going to destroy them all with the next atomic bomb. I mean, it's like of that nature, right? We have this extremely angry guy and we've all seen Craig Wright talk and he is very angry. He's this angry Aussie guy, right? But I looked at the technical debate and I already made my decision. But then this is just like the cream on the top. This is not the kind of personality that I would want in charge of anything related to the money that is supposed to take over the world. You know, what's to say that the next group that goes against what he doesn't like just gets totally blacklisted and blocked and annihilated. It's like this guy wants it his way or the highway. And there's some very ironic and hypocritical aspects to these comments right here. So he's bragging about his holdings here and talking about he can hold and he can dump, he can manipulate the market to his whim, right? If you don't do what I say, I'm gonna crash the market and screw everyone involved is essentially what he's threatening here, right? I win or it all goes down. Now, if he has this much Bitcoin and this much Bitcoin cash, he had this at the time of the fork in August 2017 when Bitcoin split into Bitcoin Cash, right? So why is he so upset right now and why is he ready to do everything against all odds to charge against this movement when he didn't do anything back when the first split happened? He sat there with his 1.05 million Bitcoin and did nothing? I mean, I find that a little ironic that suddenly he's hellbent on making sure that nothing goes against his wishes. But, you know, just a year ago, he just let this whole massive split occur without doing a single thing about it. It, it makes me feel like he's either bluffing or he's lying to us about his motives. Because if he was truly, truly passionate about doing the right thing, he would have done the right thing a year ago when the network was threatened and did split. So. Yeah, this is just a very hypocritical statement right here. And the fact that it's war and it's to death this time. Well, what about last time, Craig Wright? You know, so there's some food for thought on that. So guys, I'm going to leave you with that. That's my take of the situation. I am on the side in favor of Bitcoin ABC, both in their scaling plan and their approach to communication and their ideals, morals, virtues, and, and just straight up kindness. Um, you know, if you listen to Omri, he's a very kind man. He never talks like this. And I find this unacceptable. And I also find their approach to scaling unconvincing. So both from a technical and from a social point of view, I hope that Bitcoin SV loses this hash rate war. Now, it's very likely that we may see an attack from Bitcoin SV. They have a lot of hash rate. They're approaching 50%. They're not there yet. We have Calvin Ayers, who has a high percentage of hash rate, and we have Enchain, which has a large percentage of hash rate. And together, they make a very formidable foe. And again, Craig Wright is threatening this dominational attack, almost as if he's willing to spend as much money as necessary to take down any opposition. And again, we don't want that kind of a person in charge. So I'm just spreading this out there. Do your own research. Please watch the video link that I put below about Amory Sachet and just listen to how he approaches is the topic of scaling and then keep this in mind and and just ask yourself is this the kind of group you want to see in charge of bitcoin cash's future okay guys take care have a great day